Welcome to a Lunch with Biggie, a podcast about small business and creatives sharing their stories and inspiring you. My guest today is a professional creative in Orlando. She's a freelance writer, photographer, and entrepreneur. She's also a co-owner and co-manager of The Nook on Robinson, a beer bar in the Milk District that specializes in Florida local beverages. Please welcome the creatively talented Mary McGinn. What's going on, Mary? How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for, for having a lunch break with me. I really appreciate it. What's your go-to usual sandwich lunch for you? I really like uh, Stasios. They have uh, the flag and I add prosciutto. So I definitely recommend Oh. That. Cool. So tell people in case they don't know what is in the flag. It's got um, like a tomato and mozzarella and basil and I add a prosciutto. Nice. I like that. That's a that's a good one. That's like a light. It's kind of light, but at the same time, it, it hits the spot, especially this, during the summer, which is awesome. Um, I was thinking about this, Mary. Mary, I think I've known you since 2016, I think is when we kind of got introduced like because um, and we'll talk and we'll kind of I think we both I know how I met you. We both were at the district on Mills 50 um, and I was introduced to you because you owned a business called Deadbeat Books which was like a used literary yeah. shop. And I think you were like the, one of the first Orlando pop-ups that did uh, used books and everything like that. Um, and we were both part of the same store. Can you tell me a little bit about, and I know obviously I'm, I'm dating us, but I, I kind of wanted to, they, I feel like you've kind of always been entrepreneur-like. So I, and, and you've always figured out new ways. So I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about that. Like, how did you get started with that um, in wanting to create something like Deadbeat Books? Yeah, so it's, it, a little bit of an intense story. Um, so I wanted to be an entrepreneur forever. And um, I was listening to true, uh, like to uh, like entrepreneurial podcast constantly for years. I was reading books and listening to podcasts and I was uh, just constantly consuming this content, but I wasn't creating anything. And then in 2016, I had a very visceral experience with the Pulse Massacre. And after that, I was like, you know what? Life is short. This is what I want to do. And I am going to pursue this with everything I have. That's so, yeah, that's that, when I got, I started the bookstore. So let's, so, and I know one of the aspects of it is I know there's a few things. So I know, like, like I know you're a writer, but what made you decide mm-hmm. to do out of curiosity? Just that, like, was it like you're just obsessed with books and you're like, hey, this would be a great idea. No one else is doing this. Yeah. So actually, um, Someone who was my business partner at one point, Danny Alvarez, uh, he owns Framework Coffee now, uh, or he always has owned Framework Coffee. It was called something else when I first knew him. Yep. But um, he encouraged me. He knew that I wanted to be an entrepreneur, and he put together actually the, the first Milk Mart, which I think is going on 10 years now. Yeah. And I was a vendor at the first Milk Mart, and he said, hey, I know you want to be an entrepreneur. You're talking about doing this. Why don't you put your money where your mouth is and pop up? at Milk Mart. I love it. And so that, uh, like he gave me kind of my first opportunity with deadbeat books. Um, and it kind of, it kind of expanded into the district. I was popping up at markets, which is a little challenging in Florida because books are made of paper and storms roll through very, uh, abruptly sometimes. And books are also very heavy. So it was challenging being a pop-up bookstore. And so finding a home for my books in the district was really nice. And then I ended up, um, shutting down deadbeat books. I was in a couple of different places, but I ended up shutting down deadbeat books right before my current business opened, uh, the nook on Robinson, just, just kind of create more space in my life yeah. for that venture. No, I totally agree with that. Um, last book question I have for you is like one, what type of books do you enjoy reading? But then I also know you're a writer and I know you've, so like, mm-hmm. I'm just kind of curious, like what kind of stuff do you write? Are you, do you usually write when you, when you do write? So for books, I alternate like silly fiction, like fantasy and sci-fi with nonfiction. So I'll do one fiction book, something just entertaining and enjoyable. And then I'll do usually some kind of personal development book or educational book. And then for writing, I've done all kinds of things. I used to be a professional writer and I would write whatever people paid me to write, which, you know, I've, I've written some really wild articles, but, um, I used to be a slam poet for about five years and, but my heart has always been in sci-fi. So I am currently working on a novel that is a sci-fi dystopia horror thriller. That's awesome. Do you have a a name for it yet? 
It's called Orbit. Okay. Like, I'm, I'm going to speak it into existence, into the Orbit, so that we uh, make sure I can't. I look forward to reading that. Um, so at the same time that you did all of this, and you, t- you mentioned, obviously, the Nook, I know that you, you know, you... You, you, you kind of do a lot of firsts. Uh, you were, you worked for Orlando's first brewing, uh, Orlando brewing. And then that kind of led and, and like I mentioned in the intro, um, that you currently own co-own and co-manage the nook. Um, and by the way, congrats on six years on, on you guys having being open. That's uh, amazing. Tell people a little bit about how all that kind of came about and how you actually, uh, got the nook to be created on Robinson. So this circles back to Danny yep. again. He is a big part of my entrepreneurial journey. So the Nook is was formerly the space was formerly Sandwich Bar, and Matt Scott needed more space for his bar, and so he opened the Iron Cow a couple of doors down, and then he had this lease available and a space that was already totally built out for a bar, and he reached out to Danny because he and Danny knew each other, and then Danny reached out to me. And my other business partner, Matt, and uh, Matt and I had collaborated on an art magazine called Artborn. I was uh, the original, the original editor of the magazine, and then now his current girlfriend, Orlando, is so small. His, the girl he ended up dating, you know, almost a decade later, Stevie, uh, came on as the the full time editor, and so I was I took a step back into the literary columnist position, and so Matt and I had collaborated in the past. Danny knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I had the beer experience. So he brought us together. And then in 2020, the Nook was shut down for about eight months. And Danny had the opportunity to open a coffee shop because that was allowed to be open. The bar wasn't allowed to be open. The coffee shop was allowed to be open. So Danny ended up leaving to pursue his true passion, which is coffee. And Matt and I are co-owners now, 50-50. And we've been we've been rocking it, uh, the, just the two of us, since 2020. Uh, and you guys... I love I like okay so I will say like I I absolutely love the stuff you guys come up with. I love how you guys work together. Um I've always enjoyed everything from you guys have always figured out a way of kind of being able to adapt and pivot um which I I truly appreciate especially when you're a small business. Um you know everything from you know, when it came to COVID, the fact that you guys were like a shop where people can come and stop and pick up stuff, um, you know, and pick up alcohol. So you'd be kind of instead of it being the bar of you drinking, you can actually go buy it. You can actually pick up uh, and be like the neighborhood store. Um, even recently when you guys had the construction um, and you guys had and um, my favorite my favorite post was probably the one where you guys said you had cranes. Uh, and especially since Sandhill cranes are very popular here in Central Florida, but instead they were actually construction cranes. Um, you guys do a really, really good job um, on social and sharing the story. But I, I think what I enjoy the most is the fact of how you, well you guys have been able to pivot and adapt as things go. Can you talk a little bit about that? Like, especially when it's the two of you, are you both kind of optimistic in that aspect? Like, are you guys kind of like an ebb and flow uh, in your partnership? How does all that work? Yeah, uh, it's really nice because we're kind of yes and people. We're both creatives and we're both problem solvers. And so one of us will come up with an idea and then the other will be like, yes, and, and then we'll just go for it. Um, During COVID, we got the opportunity to do um, some creative things. We had this event that we collaborated with Yelp on and because people were so isolated and they still wanted a sense of connection, but in a way that is safe. So we collaborated with Yelp to sell these packs of beer to go where we would all get on uh, Zoom together and drink four different beers in an hour, which is a lot of beer, but it was also a lot of fun. People weren't going anywhere, so it was fine. Uh, But we'd get the the representatives from four different Orlando area breweries or, or Florida breweries, and we'd pick a style for the month. We did IPA, we did light beer, we did fruit beer, and we did sours, I believe. Oh, and probably dark beers. We had a we had a good series of this. And once a month we'd all or we'd all jump on and the reps would talk about the beer and their company and the history and the style. And uh, everyone would drink beers at their house together and it was a it was it was a lot of fun. Um so getting the opportunity to do something new and different is another way to look at challenges and uh things that come along that are going to come along as a small business that, that will uh, 
force you to grow and, and be creative. Yeah. You, you, you seriously have done uh, a great opportunity with that. You've also done a really good job considering the nook. It's not a huge space, but you've done a really great job in making it like an artistic community space. Like I know you guys have done poetry, you've done comedy, vinyl nights. Recently, uh, a popular thing has been like Orlando pop-up movies. Um, you guys have been doing like outside and stuff like that. Um, I think that's one of the things that I love is the fact of like figuring out new ways of how you can get new people in your location, but at the same time also be able to kind of provide uh, provide an outlet and be part be a, be you know obviously something huge for the community. Yeah. We definitely like to be like a host for some of the weirder things in Orlando, things that aren't, you know, your trivia night or your bingo night, which those things are great, but we like to kind of do a little off kilter things and be home to communities that might not have a space. Otherwise, um, one of our favorite ones is called Circuit Church. It's a, a night for creators of analog synth, which is a lot of like beeps and boops. It's a... Uh, it's really interesting and and creative, but not necessarily mainstream, but this once a month, this community of people that are very passionate about this type of music can come out and perform and showcase what they're doing. And it's really cool to be able to offer a space for a little bit of the like less mainstream art in Orlando. No, I that, and that's one of the things I love about what you guys have done. It's like kind of like very inclusive when it, uh, when it comes to that. Um, I, I'm kind of curious when it comes to to beer because one of the things that you you've definitely have like figured out ways and it kind of makes sense the entrepreneurial side because I know that you've created events and, and activities like Craft Orlando, the City Brutiful um, are some of the things that you've worked on. Uh, and I've also noticed a huge emphasis on like Florida, like even what the Nook does, like a big emphasis on like the Florida local beverages and stuff like that. Can you talk a little bit about like when you come up with these ideas um, and trying to incorporate, you know, kind of one, what, you know, but also kind of like, you know, what you've kind of learned along the way through these, uh, different events and different activities you've created. Yeah. So one thing for me is the importance of small business is like a big priority in my life and showcasing these small breweries and independent companies, uh, is something that is kind of existentially important to me in a, in a way. Uh, the way I kind of look at small business is that in the system of capitalism, you know, we've got these huge corporations that are not necessarily held accountable for their actions and they're, you know, destroying a lot of environments and utilizing a lot of resources. And the way to kind of take away some of the power from these massive corporations is to put them in the hands or put money in the hands of, of your local community members. So showcasing the Florida and independent small businesses is super important to me. And it's, it's been really nice to be able to create businesses and projects that focuses on uh, emphasizing these independent companies. No, I, I think that's fantastic. Out of curiosity, what do you think has been the best advice you've been given as a small business owner? Mm, that's a good, that's a good one. I don't I can't, hmm. I think that, I, I don't know that I got this from a, another small business owner, but the, the idea that if it doesn't scare you, it's not big enough. Like taking on projects that feel super safe, you're not going to grow that way. And so that's kind of how I, yeah. you know, if, if I'm feeling panicked about something that I'm doing, I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing. I think that, you know, as long as I'm afraid for the right reasons, I'm, I'm afraid because it's a big challenge and a big opportunity. Um, I think that, you know, leaning into doing things that scare you has been really important in my journey as an entrepreneur. I love that. No, I think that's, I think that's great. Um, so I have some beer, I kind of have a little bit of a beer, some beer questions. One is, do you have a favorite beer, uh, and that you, your usual go-to that, and please share it. I'm kind of curious. Um, and what kind of style of beer do you like? So it's kind of it's kind of hard for me because I am I love all styles of beer. I am a huge fan of you know as long as it's done well, I will probably like it. Uh, I don't necessarily have a favorite beer, but I do have a couple of favorite breweries. I'm a little biased because they're my neighbors. Twelve Talons Brewing does a fantastic job. They recently opened over on South Street, and they make incredible beer. And yep. Sideward Brewing is also you know 
I love their beer as well. Everything is so solid and consistent and delicious. So I don't, while I don't have a favorite beer, I do have some favorite local brews. Do you, so, so it's funny because I love you, um, a few things that I love that you guys do. One, uh, like, I love the fact that you guys do like the mystery, the $5 mystery beer. I think that's super fun um, that you do. I also like it because I, I enjoy beer, but I will say like, I'm definitely more on the, like the way your menu kind of has it set up. I, it like makes it, I don't know. Like I, you kind of, you kind of make it where it's like a little bit more simplified in the sense that where I don't feel like I can be like, okay, like, like you have easy drinker, you have hoppy, malty or, or tart. I'm probably more of an easy drinker than anything else. Um, you know, but I always enjoy like seeing the different beers that you guys have, um, on tap and what you have available and can, uh, and that's one of the things I saw. I'm always curious and I laugh because I know it was a loaded question in the sense of like, what's your favorite beer? Cause that's like when someone asked me like, what's your favorite sandwich? And then like, you're like, well, I'm like, it just depends on what my mood is. Yeah. So I know you, you know, besides being creative, I notice, you know, and obviously I follow you, I follow various uh, of your socials. Uh, you know, I know you enjoy nature trails. I know you started recently gardening, uh, you know, and by the way, you can follow her on like, you, I'll, I'll even include if she wants me to, I'll include in the show notes, um, her Instagram. Is it, is it a, a, a agrar- is it agrarian Mary dot Mary? Uh, your Instagram, I think is what it is. Yes. Okay. Um, out of curiosity, what else do you do? What else do you do for fun? What else are you, uh, what else do you work on or, or what do you do when you're, uh, when you're not at the nook or working on different things? Yeah. Uh, I'm a big gardener. I've been, I like to go out in nature, kayak, walk trails, garden. I really enjoy being outside. I'm really grateful that I chose to live in Florida because I can spend, you know, almost all year outside at like most any time when it's not storming, you know? Um, so lots of nature stuff and writing and being creative. I like to go and sit, sit at coffee shops. Like later tonight, I'm going to Stardust. They have their Monday market. So I get to go be around uh, local small farmers and get to chat with them and small independent vendors while I have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. So I like going to farmers markets and doing nature stuff. Um, I'm also, my business partner and I took on a project this year of um, we, we were able to go in with uh, it's wall, the vintage store in the milk district that's been around for over, well over a decade. And, um, yeah. we were able to purchase some, some commercial real estate and we are in the process of developing that. We don't have a tenant in mind. We're going to keep the nook where it is because don't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's a, it's a great space and we love being there. Um, but we're going to try and put, you know, another small business in the milk district. And so we're working on getting it you know, looking nice in there, up, getting some updates done. So that's been taking up a lot of a lot of my free time outside of you know my normal job. I can imagine, but that's that's congratulations on that. That's uh, that's awesome, especially one with the way real estate is around here. The fact that you can find a place, especially in the Milk District, that's like a very, uh, I would say, very everyone wants to be in the Milk District, like the sharing districts that everyone in, in Central Florida. So that's awesome that uh you know, adding another, adding another tool and another thing. I mean, you're definitely, you're definitely doing what you said you wanted to do, which is to be an entrepreneur. You're definitely uh, wearing multiple hats now. Yeah. And the, the story behind that is, is kind of beautiful. The, the owners, they owned an insurance agency for 50 years. So it's, it's a couple of different, like the building is a couple of units and there's the insurance agency and it's wall, the vintage store. And they always said to file on the owner that, they would offer her the opportunity to buy the building when they were ready to retire. And um, it was, we actually got it in 2021 and it was at, right after, you know, all of, uh, all of us had a lot of financial troubles in, in, during COVID. And so because her numbers had gone down during, you know, the closures in the pandemic, the bank was looking at her numbers and they said, oh, you can't, you can't buy this building. And so they brought us on, and then our friend Joel over at Overrice came on as well. And together, the three of us or the four of us, me, Matt, Joel and Fallon, were able to purchase the building. And it's amazing and beautiful because the owners of the insurance agency were offered cash money a lot more than what they sold it to us for. And that was just like so beautiful because they wanted to keep it in the hands of the local community. There was like a developer from New York that would have bought it and you know, just 
jack the rates, kick probably kick Fallon out, you know, but they, because they care about us and our community and their community, they chose to take less money in order to put it in the hands of people that would be a good, good stewards of the space. That's, that's amazing that you don't hear that too often. So that's, uh, that's no. really remarkable to be able to hear someone be able to do that and, and their thoughts on it and the importance of it, especially since you guys have been their neighbors for so long. So, uh, I definitely can, that's a, that's, that's, that's just awesome. <laughs> very, very cool. What do you think, what's been the hardest, what's been the most, I guess, most gratifying, but then also what's been the hardest part of running the nook? And I know obviously we have COVID and you've dealt with some other stuff, but like, what are, what do you think has been some of the stuff that's been the most gratifying aspects of it? Yeah, definitely the sense of community. A lot of people are looking for connection and it's really hard with, you know, kind of the way the world is. Everybody's stuck in their phone. Everybody's in the hustle mode. It's hard to find people to connect to a lot of the time. And as an adult, it's kind of hard to make friends. And then the nature of the nook is that it's very small and very intimate. And, you know, you're sitting shoulder to shoulder shoulder at the bar, which was very much a challenge during COVID. But um, having this space where people can have conversation and make friends, like there's a ton of people that have a friend group that they got from becoming part of our community that we built. And that is extremely gratifying. Um, One of the challenges I didn't think about before opening the bar was how much time we would be spending on like toilets. Please don't flush things that are not supposed to go in the toilet uh so that that has been a challenge having having to deal with people flushing silly things and i that was not not something that i had thought about at all but now i know a lot more about plumbing than i did before okay so i need i i have i will say that i've seen the numerous signs you guys have had in there uh so what's been the weirdest thing that you that's been in the toilet so we usually don't get to see what is in the toilet um, the snake will come and they'll clear it. We had to get rid of our paper towel, hold, like our paper towels, because people were constantly flushing paper towels. Uh, and once we got rid of, we got an air dryer, it, um, it got so much better. There was so much less issues. But uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what people are flushing, but I know it's things that they're not supposed to be. <laughs> wow. Um, so since you guys have come up with so many different creative things to do at the Nook, what are some of the things that you guys have... Uh, planned uh, during the course of the year that you guys are thinking of uh, implementing or doing or trying out? Um, Yeah. So I don't know about what's going on in the future, but we do have a lot of um, kind of rotating events that we do monthly. Uh, We kind of take the future events as they come to us. A lot of times people will be like, Hey, you have this space. I have this idea. And then if it seems like the right fit and we have the availability, it's something that we'll take on. But I really love the events that we have kind of established established. every Thursday is our vinyl night. You bring a vinyl and then you get to play one side. And then once your vinyl comes off, you can get a ticket. And then if we have time for you to play the other side, you can or a different vinyl. It's a really great event because everybody that is bringing vinyl are usually people that love music. So people can discover new music and talk to people about the, the kind of music that they like. And everybody's trying to figure out, you know, when their vinyl is going to be going on. So they're asking people about their numbers and about their records. And it's a really great community event to kind of get people connecting over a common, uh, common thing that people love, which is music. And then um, one of my very favorite events we do on the first Friday of every month, it's a jazz night. And so we have a four piece jazz band come in. It's either Golden Flower or JK and the Contraband, depending on schedules, because they're professional music musicians that are playing here. And so sometimes there's a conflict. So usually it's Golden Flower or JK and the Contraband, depending on availability. Uh, but that is an incredible event. They're so talented. I feel like they're too talented to play in our tiny bar, but it's an amazing time because everybody can, you know, watch this incredibly talented band in a very intimate space and it's just absolutely wild that we get the opportunity to do that and then you mentioned the the movie night we show a bad movie once a month on the second saturday of the month and uh, that is a blast this past month we showed mighty morphin power rangers and then this month we are showing um some bad vampire movie i can't remember the name of it right now um but the events that we have on a regular basis. We also have like a DJ lo-fi live beats night on the third Friday, which is a lot of fun. 
And then the fourth Saturday, we do our modular synth night. So having those events and those communities regularly coming to the Nook is such a blessing. No, I love that. And we're definitely going to, um, I definitely want you to be able to send me that information so we can either one, share it on social, but also share it on the show notes. Um, obviously they can see it, um, on the Nook. I think the, the Nook website is the, it's the Nook on Robinson, correct? Dot com. Uh, the Nook on Robin and Robinson dot square dot site. We don't invest. We didn't invest in okay. a. Uh, well, we'll put it. We'll, we'll put it. We'll square. put the. I'll put the links on there. Not to mention, I mean, but the real big one everyone always likes to look at, especially like weather. And we'll and we'll obviously let you plug it again. But um, you're like the Instagram always is obviously a great one to be able to grab that. That's kind of where I like to always look and see what's going on and what's happening, um, with you guys. Um, Mary, what advice would you give to to give to someone? If they were wanting to start something, just start. People think that they need a fancy business plan or a bunch of money to get going. And that's, in my experience, not what was needed. It was the passion and the network. So I would, you know, put this energy out there and, and, and network with other entrepreneurs and kind of start small, like with the pop up bookstore, for example. Um, it's like I, I didn't need a lot of overhead to pop up at markets with some books. And people think that it's this big daunting thing, but like, if you can just take it like one little bite at a time, that's the move. Cause you don't have to run before you walk. And a lot of times you'll, people will get a bunch of money and invest in building something. But until you've had the experience of, um, kind of trying things out and experimenting, you don't really even know what you need. So I say, just get started, start hanging out with entrepreneurs, start, figuring out what you want to do and then start taking little baby steps to get there. You mentioned that you, when you started, you were listening, you were listening in, in podcasts and stuff like that. Are, is there anyone, well, it's two questions. We'll go with, because of the fact that you've been doing this now for a while, one is, has your thought process from what you originally had when you were listening to podcasts and like you were listening, but not doing, um, has, has anything changed from what you were listening originally getting to where you are now? You're like, wow, like that's like, that's horse shit. You know what I mean? Like, or, or, oh my gosh, that's so real. Like, was there anything like that that you were getting that you originally were experiencing from the beginning to where you are now? Yeah, I don't really know. So I stopped listening to podcasts when I started becoming an entrepreneur. I feel like I was like, all right, I've listened to enough. I, you know, I feel like I've gotten what I needed out of this, which was mostly the inspiration to get started. And, um, so I don't, I don't really rec recall like a lot of the specific advice, but it was, it was enough to kind of get a fire under me to get moving. Um, but now I just listen to like true crime podcasts. It's my guilty pleasure. I love it. I love it. Um, and obviously the other, I guess the one thing that you could say you, you do need, or you got from it is have someone who be either like a Danny who believes in you or at least calls you out or tries to push you to do it. Um, which is always, uh, I think an important thing when you're trying to create something like this, I think it's, uh, especially if you have like a, you know, like a, either a crazy idea or just some idea in general, you need someone to kind of like hold you accountable and kind of help push you if you need that extra. Cause, uh, it's very easy to kind of talk yourself out of things. And, uh, and for me, I think my biggest thing has always been progress over perfection. I just like, it's never going to be perfect. Just, just start working on it and start making it happen. So I totally, uh, I totally agree with you on that. Um, Mary, I've always yeah. been a fan of yours. So this is one of the things I've always, I've, I've always loved what you've, what you've done. I've loved your energy. Um, and I really do. I, I think it's awesome what you're doing at the nook, uh, and every, and your other endeavors, I know they're all going to be successful. So I, I really appreciate you. Um, taking the time to be on with me. How can people follow you and where can they check out the Nook uh, on Robinson? Tell uh, tell folks, and obviously I know we'll, we'll go over all the events and everything like that. I'll put that on there. But, uh, but how can people follow you, follow you personally if they want to follow you, as well as also follow the, the bar you know, if they want to come by and uh, have a cocktail or a beverage? Yeah, so we're at, or my, my Instagram is at MC double underscore McGinn. And then the Nook is on Instagram at the Nook on Robinson. Uh, we're also also both on Facebook, uh, but Instagram. I think you know I'm, we're probably a little bit more active on on Instagram personally and and for 
for my business as well. Thank you so much for, for being on, Mary. I really appreciate it. Um, that's our show for today. Thanks for having, uh, you know, thanks for coming on and uh, having lunch with me or at least my lunch break. Uh, definitely make sure to check them out online. I'll put the show notes on there. You'll see it on the Instagram, Lunch with Biggie Instagram. You'll be able to see all the information, uh, be able to follow uh, and get all of that. If you enjoyed the show, definitely make sure to subscribe. Uh, if you want to check out and um, support my brand, check out my brand, Deli Fresh Threads. Um, thank you. Until next time. Keep eating sandwiches and follow your passion. Thanks, everyone.